<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and in this video, we're going to be revisiting, well, Legend of Dragoon, of all things. I think this is the first time I've actually covered it in its own dedicated video here on the channel, but for anybody who does not know, The Legend of Dragoon is a fantastic RPG that is essentially stuck on the original PS1. Yes, we have seen ways of playing it through emulation that are offered up, for example, playing it like on a PS3 uh, through the digital storefront, However, it would be nice if we could have a actual ported copy of it, and well, you're now able to do that and play it natively on PC through a Java port using the Severed Chains project. Now, I'm going to have links for everything down below in the description as you follow along, but Severed Chains, as you can see here, is a project which is really working on getting The Legend of Dragoon ported over to PC and run through Java. You can find more information on it here from the project lead Corey, otherwise known as Monoxide, and there's several great links and information on this as well too. This is all certainly playable and working, however it is worth noting that if you watch this video long into the future, it's probably going to be in a better state. As you can see right here, they even state, as of April 2023, the game is completable with exception for a rare crash with the final boss. You can also look at the pros and cons list here, showing all of the positive features here. However, some of the current issues are minor graphical bugs, some sound bugs, music is not implemented yet, and there's no resolution scaling. But I'm sure in due time, those are all going to be fixed up. However, this is just going to be an adaption for the setup guide showing how you can take the original PS1 game from disc and play it on your PC. This is, again is not emulation, this is a native port on here. So we'll go ahead and get started we are going to need a few things. First of all, we're going to need our PC, and I'm going to be backing up my own copy, so you will need a CD or DVD drive of some kind, as well as the original game. I'm going to be using the North American NTSC U version of this game. Then, of course, you'll need all the downloads that will be available here in the setup guide. First of all, you will need at least Java 17. Now, it looks like according to the guide, they recommend 17 over 19, and at the moment here, as I'm seeing this, the ones that are available at least easily are version 17 and version 20. So I'm going to go to Java 17 and I'm going to be using the x64 installer. You can just download this exe and save it somewhere you can easily find it. Next up for the disk backup here, I'm going to be using ImageBurn. Again, you can download this and save it somewhere you can easily find it. And finally, it would be recommended to use the latest recommended build available. You can go to the releases page over at the Legend of Dragoon Java GitHub. You can check out all the new features, major improvements, and everything here. Come down here, check out the technical overview and such, bug fixes, and down here you will have your download available for whichever OS you're using. I myself am using Windows, so I'm going to download the windows.zip. We should now have the things we need. So first of all, in order to install the JDK, we can just double click on our executable, say yes if this prompt comes up, and step through the process here. Really, all of that is okay. I didn't have to change anything, so I'll let it install. Once it's installed, you can click on Close, and we no longer need the JDK download. Next, if you want to install Image Burn, it's going to be really the same thing. Say yes to this, and step through the process here of installing everything, as long as you agree to all of this. Now, I've already installed this, so I don't really need to continue on here, but, well, it's all good. We're just gonna reinstall it. Why not? And yeah, that's some old software I have, so I'll go ahead and say yes, and there we go. Now with that installed, we're all good. Now let's go ahead and back up our copy of the game. As I said, I'm going to be using the NTSCU North American release of this, and you are going to need a CD drive, DVD drive, or a Blu-ray drive hooked up to your computer, as well as the game discs. So let's go ahead and back them all up. You can go ahead, pop your disc in, and then open up ImageBurn. When you open up ImageBurn, click on Create Image File from Disk, and wait for it to initialize. It should look a little something like this. Now once everything has loaded up here, we can go ahead and set the read speeds to max, that's going to be okay, and then we need to select where we're going to save our image file to for this disk. Now I already have the game backed up here, but you can call it whatever you want to, so you can call it, for example, we're going to rename this later, but you can call it like LOD disk 1, for example, and this is just if you want to still even back it up and use it in emulators and just have it backed up in general, that's going to be fine. But once you have it saved there, we can go ahead keep it as a .bin file, that's going to be okay. Click on save, 
And now at this point, you want to click on this button and give image burn a few minutes. It's now going to copy all of the contents of your disk onto your computer. I won't bore you with all the details here, but once you do this one time, you're going to have to do it three more times for the other three disks. Just make sure you back up all four disks onto your PC and make sure they're accessible. So there we go. Once this is complete, you can click on OK. And at this point, you can then eject your disk. And like I said, you're going to repeat that for disks two, three, and four. All right, so in the final stretch of setup here, you should have all four of your disks on hand. You're going to have bin and queue files, but don't worry, we're just going to worry about the bin files themselves. So let's go ahead and get this all worked on. You're going to want to grab your zip file that you downloaded, and we're just going to right click it, and we're going to extract it using whatever extraction software we have. I'll just extract it into its own folder called Windows. And I'm actually going to rename this here to Legend of Dragoon Java, just to have that named specifically. Now, once you open this up, it should look a little something like this. Within this folder here, you're going to right click and create a new folder, and you're going to call it all lowercase in one word, ISOs, just like that. Inside of the ISOs folder, you're going to grab your PS1 game, and you're going to look for the bin files themselves. You don't need the Q files. If you need to verify which ones these are, you can check the type by just organizing them by type here, and you just need the bins. Otherwise, you're going to need the files that are several hundred megabytes in size, not the ones that are one kilobyte. Once you have these all here, you can really just right click and copy or move them and paste them into the ISO's directory. Finally, once those are copied over, we can close out of the original directory, and in here, you should have your four bin files. Now we need to rename these accordingly. Each of them, we are going to have to rename not only the name, but also the extension. So if you're using Windows, for example, you can click on View, and make sure you show file name extensions. And we're going to have to organize all of these. So for disk one, you're just going to rename it to 1.iso and you're going to remove the bin. If you get a message like this saying that you're changing a file name extension, you want to say yes. And even though these are .bin files, if you rename them to .iso, they will work for this application. So we're going to do the same thing here with disk two. We're going to rename it to 2.iso, say yes. For disk three, we're going to rename this to 3.iso, say yes. And finally, we're going to rename this final disk to 4.iso. Excellent. Now once all your disks have been renamed, we have the game imported over. You can now come out to the root folder here, and we're going to run this launch.bat file. Just double click this. It's now going to bring up two windows. It's going to bring up this command prompt window, which is going to be your game unpacker. And you're also going to see more of a visual right here to see what exactly is happening. Just leave these two alone, let it do its thing. You will have to perform this step the first time you run this. Now after a bit, after the unpacking process is complete, you'll know it's ready to go because you're going to hear some wonderful music and you're going to see the intro FMV play, as you can see right here. Now it is also worth noting that by default, this does play using the keyboard only, not with the mouse. However, this is compatible with controllers. So if you're going to be using a controller, it would be recommended to plug it in now. As you can see, I'm using a third party Xbox controller. It's really just a 360 controller that is plugged in through USB here. And if I press the A button, it does seem to work. So since there is no scaling on this right now, you are going to get it to look like this. We don't need to worry about all the debug information here. So unless you are interested in that, you can just minimize it. But ultimately we can now maximize this window and check it out, we can play through this. Now on screen here, I am going to put up the in-game and combat controls, which are hard-coded to the keyboard. So if you just want to use your keyboard, you're more than welcome to do that. However, if you want to set up your controller, if, for example, if you hook it up and it works right out of the box, that should be just fine. But if you do need to make any customizations, you can plug in your controller either before or during the game when it's running. I'd recommend before. Then press the F9 key on your keyboard and press any button on the controller that you want to set up. It is worth mentioning here in the future, whenever you want to launch this game, you simply open up the folder and you just double click the launch.bat file. As you can see, we'll do that right here brings up the command prompt window, it brings up the game itself, 
and at this point you can just maximize this and it'll work just fine. And as an added bonus, it has been mentioned that once this is built out, this is actually portable as well too. You see, even though you have to install Java and Image Burn, you're not actually installing the game itself here. So what you can do is if you ever want to, you can take this and copy and paste it onto another drive, onto an external hard drive, a external USB flash drive, take it with you wherever you want to go and just play it like that. As long as you have Java 17 at minimum installed on the computer you're running this on, you should be able to play this just fine. If you like what's been going on here as well too, you can always join into their Discord server and of course you can also support the developers here by buying them a coffee. So as you can see just going through this, the game seems to be working just fine. It's really awesome to see that this is not emulation, this is a port here that has been done and this is all running through Java. So seriously, a big thank you and shout out to the Severed Chains team. They have done some fantastic work here and the setup was pretty easy to do for the most part, really nothing out of the ordinary here. So super cool to see overall and if you are wanting to experience or re-experience Legend of Dragoon, this might be a fantastic way of doing so. Either way, that is about it for this video here. This is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated. And if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well too.